And finally tonight, new research that could lead us all in a different direction. In June, a 213-foot luxury yacht sailed off the southern coast of Italy when suddenly it veered off course. But this was no sinister act worthy of a spy flick. Instead, a team of researchers from the University of Texas at Austin had deliberately coerced the $80 million vessel from its track without physically taking the helm. With the blessing of those aboard, Professor Todd Humphreys and his graduate students employed a technique called GPS spoofing to effectively disorient the ship's positioning system. Changes went undetected by alarms, and the autopilot system shifted the yacht to what it thought was the original course, not one selected by Humphreys' team. The demonstration was the first to show GPS spoofing could pose a real threat to the world's civilian maritime industry. A year earlier, the Texas research group showed the same danger also exists in the civilian aerospace sector. They successfully used their GPS spoofing system to commandeer an unmanned aerial vehicle on UT's campus and repeatedly brought the small, helicopter-like drone to the ground by altering information sent to its altitude navigation system. And Todd Humphreys, the University of Texas researcher behind these projects, joins us now. Also with us is Milton Clary. He works with federal government agencies to identify such threats. He's a senior analyst at Overlook Systems Technology. So, Todd Humphreys, this has a kind of innocuous, funny even name of spoofing, but it sounds rather serious. You're, in essence, you're, you're tricking the GPS system? That's right. We convincingly fake the GPS signals and make a receiver think that it's at some other place or some, some other time. And why do it? Why, what, 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 what's behind this experimenting? Well, you know, we had done experiments in our laboratory and we'd convinced ourselves that we could hack a GPS receiver, make it believe it's some other place. But what does this mean? What does it entail? Could you, for example, remotely and clandestinely lead an expensive and enormous ship at sea off course without the, the crew even knowing? That was the question we sought to answer, and it turns out the answer is yes. Milton Clary, uh, how do you view this, this spoofing? What, what, how, how do you think about it? Well, spoofing is certainly a, um, a, a real phenomenon, and essentially, you know, spoofing is boils down to just being a very believable lie that the receiver gets down, it thinks it's getting direct, uh, data from the satellite, but in effect, you think of it as just being in a neighborhood and someone has switched all the street signs around. You think you're on the right street, but you're really not. And, and why is it, why, why are these kinds of experiments, I'll ask you the same question, mm -hmm. why is it interesting, why is it important? Well, it's important to understand what can be done so we can in turn learn how to prevent it from being done. And there are capabilities for the last several years, there's been national policy to develop capabilities to preclude uh, these, these types of, cap you know, basically threats to spoofing. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, certain elements within the federal government have sort of been a chihuahua in a china shop when it comes to actually getting the work done. Well, what kind of, what kind of um, when, you, when we think about what's vulnerable and what's not, what kinds of things are really bound by a GPS system? Well, when you consider what GPS does, people think of it as, you know, how far am I to the green or how do I get to the local shopping center? Mm -hmm. But GPS is embedded in so much of our critical infrastructure. All our communication systems depend on the timing from GPS. Uh, all the emergency responders rely on GPS. Emergency 911, if you dialed that on your telephone, it will show the operator right where you are based on the GPS in your phone. If that gets, uh, GPS goes away or it gets spoofed, uh, that could be very disruptive. Mm -hmm. All our you know, ground transportation, water transportation, uh, rail transportation, positive train control, which is a very important thing to the Federal Railway mm -hmm. Administration. I want to know where these trains are at and what, where they are in time. So, Todd Humphreys, how, how hard is it to do or easy to do? Uh, you use that word hacking. Is that what it's about? Is it the proverbial... Uh, hacker, the teenager who can do this, or, or, or what? It is a, a kind of hacking attack, but I wouldn't expect a teenager to be able to do what we've done. It took a team of about four PhD students several years to come up with the box that we developed that can convincingly fake these GPS signals. The real worry I have is that someone who is perhaps not a PhD could operate a box like we have. So if the software ever got, got out onto the internet, or if uh, someone else replicated the box, 
then it wouldn't take a PhD to run the thing. So uh, pick up on this question of where the vulnerabilities are and, and using what the research you've been doing, how would one protect those? Well, we've been looking into protections at the University of Texas and Cornell University, Stanford, many other universities and agencies across the globe. What we've found over the last couple of years is that the most practical uh, protections are also the, uh, the least effective and, and the least expensive and, and so forth. Uh, but the impractical, somewhat cumbersome protections are the most effective. And so we're in a bit of a conundrum right now, but I'm hoping that within a, a couple of years, we'll find a sweet spot. We'll be able to implement something that effectively defends and doesn't uh, break the bank. But your feeling is that at this moment, it's important to talk about, to, to, make, to do the research, to make it public precisely to get to that next step. I think so. I think we've waited long enough for solutions to come about on their own. Now it's time to, to go to the public to uh, expose the problem and get more people thinking about it. Milton Clary, I know you do a lot of work with the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. how, how, how much, when you were talking about the various vulnerabilities, how much yes. is it in military? Well, the military GPS is a completely different system than what the civilians use. It has a much more sophisticated signal structure, and that in itself is embedded in a, in a very sophisticated encryption. So to be able to get into the signal and, and uh, fool it, you can't even get there. It's uh, to, to really mess with it in the way that uh, Dr. Humphreys has done. Now, as far as uh, trying to give ourselves some re resilience, one of the biggest uses of GPS is not the position data, but the timing information. And uh, there's countries, United Kingdom, Japan, and Korea, all have a system called Loran. It was a, an American navigation system, it goes back to the 40s. And they're, they're building an enhanced Loran that would provide timing signals uh, as a backup. And that system, is, Loran, would be very, very difficult to jam. Uh, so countries, companies, everybody's watching this, right? Oh, yes. There's a lot of people that, that care about it or you work in it, pay close attention. All right. Fascinating stuff. Milton Clary, Todd Humphreys, thank you very much. Thank you. I enjoyed being here.